Uh, our biomes were the temperate desert, cold deserts, and chaparral. Uh, so temperate desert locations. Temperate deserts can be found in North America, Asia, along the coast of Chile, and um, parts of the Middle East. Specific, uh, specific examples we found were the Great Basin Desert, Mojave Desert, and Sonoran Desert. Uh, when it comes to climate, summits are, uh, summers are typically long and dry and winter has very little rainfall. Average rainfall can range from anywhere from 2 to 4 centimeters annually. Temperature can be between 21 and 26 degrees Celsius in the summer and then drop below 5 degrees Celsius in the winter, which makes the temperate desert very different because why it's called temperate, it can experience both like warmer temperatures as well as the colder temperatures. Uh, comparatively though, it's not as hot as other desert zones. Uh, soil, depending on location, soil can vary from fragmented rock to uh, sandy. Typically it is aridosols because you're in a desert, so there's not a lot of moisture, which makes it very dry. Wind, it actually um, sweeps away the sandy topsoil of deserts to reveal the rock below, so that actually contributes to erosion. And compared to other deserts, the soil of temperate deserts is actually has a lower salt concentration. Um, the physical environment, like I said, it's a desert, so typically it is very dry and arid from the lack of rainfall, so there's not a lot of moisture in the air and uh, soil. Cooler nights actually reduces the amount of moisture loss from transpiration. Um, there's not really much subsurface water because any excess water would go to the plants because they need water to survive. And because it's got such a rockier terrain compared to other deserts, that's why the soil can range from fragmented rock to sandy soil. When it comes to flora and fauna, it actually varies sometimes, but typically, uh, for flora at least, there's xerophytic vegetation, which means it needs very little water. Uh, plants such as sagebrush, cacti, mesquite, and bursage are typical plants you can find in a temperate desert because they don't need so much water or maintenance. Uh, some plants have actually developed characteristics such as spines or woolly hair, and they use those to shade themselves from the sunlight, which can significantly reduce water loss. For fauna, uh, the animals really need to be accustomed to varying temperatures, so a few of the animals that are found in the temperate desert can include kangaroo rats, snakes, lizards, and jackrabbits. And a lot of the animals that live in temperate deserts have to be accustomed to burrowing so they can escape the varying temperatures that they experience, and as well as the fact there's not a lot up top that they can use for habitats. Uh, the main human interference when it comes to temperate deserts is off-road vehicles. Because they have such a huge impact on like the area, they compact the soil and like make it more difficult to create habitats out of, and they can also mess around with the vegetation. Cold deserts are most likely to be found in the polar regions of the Arctic and Antarctica, but several of the Earth's major cold deserts can be found in other areas, such as northern China, the coast of Chile, and parts of western United States. Some of the world's major cold deserts include the Gobi Desert, the Atacama Desert, and the Great Basin Desert. Cold desert climate is characterized by its cool <coughs> temperatures, averaging out worldwide between negative 2 and 4 degrees Celsius. In cold deserts, snow is usually the main form of precipitation the area receives, ranging from 15 to 26 centimeters per year. Soil in cold deserts can be described as heavy, silty, salty, and porous. They are generally aridosols, which are mostly made up of sand with very little nutrients and a high alkaline toxin content. Cold deserts are covered by sandy soil and dunes, with some scattered, low-lying plants mostly comprised of shrubs. It can be covered by a large amount of snow, but the amount of snow a cold desert receives is usually determined by what part of the world the cold desert resides in, or what time of year it is in that part of the world. For example, the Great Basin Desert, located in the northwestern United States, can be observed with a fair amount of snow in the winter, but none in the spring. 
Cold deserts generally have scattered, low-lying shrubbery, such as sagebrush, that can survive well on small amounts of water. It can sometimes be home to larger trees, such as camel's thorn, found in the Gobi Desert. The vast majority of animals in the cold desert biome are mammals due to the frigid temperatures. They are generally burrowers who seek warmth by making their homes as holes in the ground. Some examples include jackrabbits, mule deer, ground squirrels, and pocket mice. The largest human interference in the cold desert biome would be excessive and improper burning of weeds and shrubs. The burning of weeds and shrubs creates a cause and effect change within the ecosystem as shown through a study done by the Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area, or the NCA. The study revealed that the improper burning of weeds and shrubs destroyed the homes of numerous ground squirrels, which in turn lowered the population of birds of prey in the area. The shovel biome can be found through most of California, the southern tip of Africa, in south southwestern Australia, uh, central Chile, the Mediterranean basin, and throughout both Spain and Portugal. Uh, shovel environments also tend to be on the western side of most continents and are usually near the coastline. They can uh, usually be found 30 to 40 degrees above or below the equator. Um, shovel environment is created when a when cool water hits, uh, it goes to a dry, warm land mass. Uh, the climate of chaparral environments tends to be uh, moderately warm year-round. Um, and they also have cool nights. Uh, chaparral environments uh, tend to have uh, low to moderate rainfall, depending on where they are in the world, about 16 to 17 inches. The, the great variation is due to uh, the proximity of the coast and where they are located in the world. Uh, the soil and chaparral environment is often very rocky with uh, almost non-existent and somewhat patchy olayer. Uh, the lack of uh, any depth to the olayer uh, contributes to high erosion uh, seen in the chaparral environments. Uh, the soil is also low in most other nutrients aside from the iron oxide that gives it a like, kind of a red tint. Um, this is slightly different because there's some, some rivers, some major rivers that go through it and the soil changes when you're closer to the rivers. Um, Chaparral environments are kind of characterized by short grasses, low-lying uh, scrub, dwarf trees, and plant life scattered almost uniformly throughout. They tend to be rocky, uh, mountainous or hilly, and like again they're by the coast usually, so uh, within a couple hundred miles, a uh, couple hundred miles to the coast. Um, they have, because of the high erosion, uh, they have tend to have weird rocky protrusions like plateaus and uh, things of that nature. Most of the plants in chaparral environments have evolved to have leaves that are small and narrow. Um, some of them have waxy texture and or uh, lighter colors to deal with the heat and to retain water in the summer and throughout the year. Um, many also evolve so that they can withstand the periodic fires that sweep through, uh, especially in the summer season. There's a lot of uh, fires that go through. Um, in fact, some species of plant can't even cannot flower or sprout without uh, fire going through to germinate the seeds. Uh, the fire is such a big part of the biome is because the leaves, the, wax, the waxiness of the leaves makes them very flammable and uh, prone to catching, especially during the dry season. Uh, mo most of the animals that live there tend to be nocturnal. Uh, things like mammals um, are nocturnal uh, and like snakes. Uh, most of them the only creatures that are diurnal are happen to be uh, smaller reptiles like snakes or lizards, uh, <coughs> birds of prey, and insects. The scarcity of resources uh, means that a few top predators can exist in such an environment, and uh, mostly those are like birds of prey, uh, coyotes, snakes. Um, it, var it varies from where you are in the world, um, more so um, like Australia and like those dingoes in Australia and other places. Uh, the two main issues caused, uh, the two main human issues and impacts is that the habitat destruction and accidentally set fires. Uh, chaparral land is undesirable. It's not very productive, so it's usually uh, cleared for grazing land. And the, another issue, the other issue of the fires, are often accidentally set, especially in the summer months, by humans. And while chaparral environments are designed to cope with fires, uh, sometimes there's a lot of fires successively, and that like the harms your ability to regrow after repeated fires.
Thank you.